I'm Chief Cheryl Victorian. This is Waco PD on the beat. Whether it's crime or just getting to know the Waco Police Department, we're here to talk about things that matter most to you. Hello, Waco, and welcome to Waco PD on the beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the public information officer for the Waco Police Department. And I'm Officer Janae Draper with the Neighborhood Engagement Team. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us this week. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, today we got a uh, special guest with us. We have, I'm probably going to get it backwards, but is it housing and community or community and housing development? Housing and community development. Housing and community development uh, here with us. So I'll let y'all go ahead and introduce yourselves and then I'll kind of tell us even how we even kind of met up. Sure. So I'm Josh Caballero. I'm the community engagement officer for the housing and community development department here at the city of Waco. Awesome. And I'm Susan Holt. I'm the housing loan coordinator. Perfect. So it was kind of also random how we kind of met up because fun fact is we had a meeting um, last week that I did not realize that we had. And I think my partner didn't realize because we got like a text like five minutes before and we were both out eating saying, hey, are you going to make this meeting? And we were both (laughs) like... (laughs) Um, I guess so. <laughs> so <laughs> we hauled back to the tower, and um, and so we got there, and uh, yeah, a committee had set up a meeting with housing and community development, um, and kind of how we could work together and partner and kind of help reach our engagement aspect uh, with the community all working together. And then um, during the introductions, I was talking about a podcast and um, kind of how reaching out to stuff and. Um, I know we got two people. Uh, you can't, uh, you won't be able to hear them on the mic. But we also got two more people um, in the room with us as well. We got Kathleen and Justin over here. They're waving. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, yeah, they got excited about it, and so um, I just want to kind of get the word out there so to kind of help them, and they can talk a little bit about what they do and kind of services they'll offer the community. But um, try and get them more involved and help. More, not more involved, but help the community un- like understand more about the services they offer and maybe get the word out there. So if you want to just kind of talk a little bit about what you do, services you offer or anything like that. Yeah. So we, you know, that meeting you're talking about last week, we really kind of, um, it made sense in some ways for the community engagement team from housing and community development, as well as the neighborhood engagement team to get together and see what ways we can work together. And this podcast being an excellent idea, I think we were sitting there we had not had lunch yet so we were starving while y'all were out you know, <laughs> so y'all, y'all knew about arrive. the meeting <laughs> it was on their calendar it was on our calendar um no but you know we got to talking and really uh, just realized there's lots of ways for us to connect and work together and make sure that you know we have similar goals in in communi- communicating and connecting with community members here in Waco making sure that we're providing services in a way that is helpful to the community and, and making sure that they're aware and building that relationship um, with folks. And so, uh, yeah, so thanks for having us on the podcast. Um, I do think we, <laughs> we were a little jealous when we uh, found out that you guys had a podcast. We've been talking about um, ways that we could maybe get some word out about um, some of the services and programs that we've done. And so we had thrown out some ideas around some videos for with uh, previous clients of ours, um, who have benefited from some of our programs, and we've talked about, you know, some different things. But a podcast is a natural way to do that, yeah. and so yeah, we're happy to be here. Okay, when y'all get your own <laughs> shout out, and we're gonna come be on. That's it, right. So. We'll have you on when, when we have <laughs> our own segment. Um, so yeah, just really quickly, I'll just kind of speak broadly, and then let Susan talk a little bit more about some of the details, but. Um, with housing and community development, we have several things going on right now. So one, we always have several programs um, that we want to talk about a little bit today. And so one is our down payment assistance program. And that is really for first time homeowners who are looking to purchase a home. Um, So we have assistance that they can qualify for with that. We also have our housing rehab program. Um, So that is for exactly what it sounds like, right? It's it's rehab. um, So any kind of repairs that are needed on the home, we've done a lot of different things. And so I know often folks um, are looking at repair programs and they they typically cover minor repairs. Um, and we're hoping with our rehab program to come in and actually be able to do a little bit more substantial work um, on houses nice. where that's needed. Um, and then we also have our lead is preventable program. And so that is a program where we're really doing lead abatement. And that is a, a huge task. Um, a few years ago, there was a big um, article that came out and our public health district has been doing a lot of work um, in that. And so it's it's really a concern for households 
where there are children present, um, especially if, even if children don't live in the household, but they are, they spend a majority of time there in that household, then we want to look at those houses and um, do our lead abatement program with them. Um, in addition to that, we are currently, as a community engagement team, looking at a variety of different things um, in the that came out of our recent housing uh, study and report uh, that came out last year. <clears throat> and so that study uh, indicated 17 different recommendations um, to address different housing needs here in our community and a wide range of, of recommendations, to be quite honest. And so I know that everyone always talks about affordable housing or low-cost housing, uh, and that means a lot of different things, but the truth is that we have a unit shortage across income levels here in Waco. And so we're really looking at different ways to begin to address that. And part of that is is looking at what we're currently doing with our current programs and how we can increase capacity there and expand those services, but also thinking creatively through some new ideas. And so as a part of our work, part of what we're doing right now is engaging community members um, really to provide feedback into that process and help us create uh, those strategies that are actually going to work here in Waco, right? The report um, I mentioned said 17 strategies, but we don't know what that looks like or how those yeah. work here in Waco. <laughs> um, and so we want, you know, people to be involved and engaged in that process with us. And so, yeah, we have a lot going on, I, I guess. Yeah, they, got, to say. And they had time for a meeting with yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> On our calendar, showed up on time yes. and everything. <laughs> I, I feel like that's going to be held against me for a while. But my lunch was delicious, by the way, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so I I know I kind of spoke very, really broadly. I know folks are probably wondering so how, how do you get connected to these um, resources, these programs, who does who do they actually serve? So I'll let Susan talk about some of the details yeah, um, yeah, for those. Absolutely. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, so I oversee a couple of the programs we have, which is the home rehab program, uh -huh. um, the lead is preventable program, which they mostly run concurrently together. Um, normally, if we're doing the lead abatement, we're also doing the home rehab at the same time with, with that same property, um, and then also the down payment assistance program, um, and those are um, you do have to income qualify for those, um, and then. For that, we have a second set of funding now, um, some ARPA funding, which um, also allows your income to be a little bit higher um, now than it used to be to be able to qualify for those programs. Um, for the home rehab program, we allow up to $50,000 of home rehab, home repair. Oh, shoot, um, how do I sign and up? Then, yeah, it's $20,000 <laughs> of yeah. lead abatement. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. And then we also have a, a Healthy Homes grant for $5,000. So if get a property where we can do all three you're like you're looking at potentially seventy five thousand dollars of work being done to your home wow wow yeah. that's a, that's amazing it, it really is yeah um and then if you live in certain areas of the city which is called the uh qualifying census track then you um, don't even have to income qualify if you're living in those um in those areas and we're able to look the address up and see if you're in that area so if you have a question if you're in that area you can call our office we can look your address up real quick and say yeah you're in the qct area so if you're over the income limit it wouldn't even matter you'd, you'd still be able to uh, be eligible for the program right that is awesome yeah. how Good. many people in the community take advantage of these programs um i would say we get a lot of applications started we don't get a lot of applications finished um, so is it a is it a long process or is it just no it's re it's it's actually a lot simpler than it used to be because everything's electronic now so we have an online application uh -huh. um, and if you can you can go to our website um, to the housing and community development website and you can click a link that takes you right to our online application mm -hmm. and then you can just start filling your application out there and we can see it as soon as you create the application we can see it so if you just only want to just create it and then call us we can actually finish the rest of it for you over oh, the phone. Okay. And then all you have to do is just provide us the documentation that you need to get, which is just basic income, asset information, um, identification, and then just some information about your home, like uh, a copy of the deed, home insurance, um, and things like that. Yeah, because I know when we were having the meeting, I was just in all of all the services that y'all offered that I didn't know even was available. So I was going on the website and, and looking, you know, at the at the services and stuff, and especially like the lead abatement stuff. I found that very very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of reading up on that, but, um, and we'll kind of talk about, but it is on the city website where you go to departments um, and you click the link on housing and community development and all that stuff is on there. Um, but it actually is really, I don't know. I just got to say that, that that part really intrigued me on the lead abatement and stuff. And then just yep. hearing like the amount that you are willing to do to kind of help 
build, and all this is just to help Waco just mm-hmm. build a better community, right? Housing and, and all like that. So that's just amazing. Well, and that is w- one thing I was going to say is even if the application seems uh, like a lot, mm-hmm. you know, maybe initially when you first open it up, the good thing is we do have staff and a great team of folks who are willing to help you. So yeah. you can just call the office. We'll walk you through the process. We'll walk you through the application. Um, we have some folks who are really good at checking up and making sure that you turn in all the documents that are needed and required. And so yeah. um, don't let that be a barrier. And that's what what I said, I that say. probably is extremely helpful because it can might just seem overwhelming. Yeah. You know, yeah. Everything. Yeah. So when you just are, start it and are not call. computer. They don't yeah. like being on the computer. And so we can we set up appointments with them, have them come to the office and they can just sit in the office with our eligibility specialists and yeah. the eligibility specialists will fill out the application online for them while they're sitting there yeah because that would that would be me i feel like i would get overwhelmed with the application and just like probably just put my name and start it and be like uh-huh. okay someone just well, <laughs> one just <laughs> give me breathing techniques and then like help me through yeah. each of the other stuff but no that's amazing that y'all actually have someone to kind of help you with through and um, yeah we do try to make it as easy as possible so yeah and that's awesome and then y'all are going to also be um because before the podcast we had a it's not a meeting we call it a powwow because the meeting room was taken <laughs> So we circled in our chairs. Okay. Um, so I'm, those are now called powwows okay. uh, with Unidos <laughs> um, and kind of helping get um, get them partnered up with Unidos. But you're also going to be at a couple of events that you'll have coming up as well to kind of help. That's right. And it sounds like after our little powwow, we're going to be at the Unidos event in September Unidos, as well. Yeah. Um, so. Which is great. I mean, that's part of why we wanted to connect with you all and – see what ways we can partner and work together. Yeah, because um, so yeah. there's no telling who's listening that's like, hey, I want housing and community development at my event, so you just might get, you know, flooded. And so y'all know where to find them. Go on the website and get their number, but make sure you send a shout-out that you heard them on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> when well, we come to your events. <laughs> well, I think you made a good point, is that there's this overarching goal of we want to have a safe, happy, a healthy community, right? And we're all doing that in our own way, so let's figure out a way for all of us to come together and yeah. reach that goal that we all have, right? Um, so I think that's really cool that they had that y'all reached out to the net unit and to see how you can work with them, work with us at the PD to reach a, a broader community and vice versa too, right? Because yeah, no, there's absolutely. whole communities that we try and tap into as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and part of why we even had this initial discussion is we have a group of community members who are meeting together in North Waco, helping us with some of our housing strategies. And we asked them to start thinking about what does it look like to have a healthy neighborhood and and think broader, even beyond housing needs. And one of the things that came up over and over in that group was safety um, concerns. What does it look like to have safety in the parks and safety in the neighborhood? And what does that begin to look like? And so we reached out to net and had an officer come out and speak to that group of residents, um, which is great. You know, I mean, it really helped them kind of understand what was already being done. um, Because oftentimes what we are finding is that community members just aren't aware. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when they say we want more of this, often it's already actually happening. They just haven't made that connection yet. Yeah. And so this kind of partnership, I think, is beneficial to both of us. Yeah, absolutely. So did you guys say how long you've been at the city? So I've, I've only been at the city for nine months. <laughs> okay, um, hey, I'm the, okay. yeah, the community engagement team is actually fairly new. And so um, uh, it actually came out of one of the recommendations that I mentioned earlier oh, um, nice. of increasing the capacity at the housing and community development staff. Um, and so the three of us are new, um, me, Kathleen, and Justin, uh, to the city of Waco, but happy to be here. Well, welcome. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. <laughs> And, you and I've been here a little over three years. Okay, okay. So you've been here a little bit longer. I mean, but honestly, though, when you think of Waco, I mean, Hot Topic is housing. Sure. I mean, sure. just the rate that this city is growing yes, is absolutely. substantial, right? And so how important is it that you guys continue to have this new, you know, you you guys and now at the, working at the city of Waco to expand on these services and, and help the community? Yeah, I think it's I think it's um, really important, right? So, um, but but I also think part of what we're experiencing in Waco right now is a huge amount of growth um, in our city, and so that requires us to be thinking creatively about how do we as a city grow 
with new population and new people coming here. Um, and part of that is obviously housing, and that that is what everyone's talking about, it seems. Um, but I also think that um, we also need to be thinking about not only how are we growing as a city and making sure that we're keeping up with that, but how are we supporting folks who have been here um, in Waco yeah. and sustaining, helping them sustain um, that growth as a city that we're experiencing currently? And so I think that's where our programs like our rehab and our Let Us Preventable programs become really important to make sure that we're taking care of the housing stock we already have in the city. Mm-hmm. New development is happening all around us, and yeah. that's going to continue to happen, and that is great um, and good growth uh, for our city, but we also need to be taking care of the housing stock and the residents who have lived here for quite some time. And I think um, that's so like so important, and I, th- I really want to send a shout to that because you know, from someone who's lived here for 36 years. I mean, I was born and raised here, so I'm seeing the growth. Um, and a lot of it is, like, you know, new people coming in and growing. But to really take care of, you know, and to also have resources uh, available for those who have actually been here and help people who have been here sustain the growth and help them grow as well, I think that's that's huge. And, again, that's all just part of us each having our own piece of the pie or puzzle and, like, putting it together so we can make it, mm-hmm. like, a whole well, that's true. Puzzle. And I mean, I, I just did it myself where people talk about the growth, people coming in. But you're right. What about the people that are already here? Yeah. That are. Have, see, have you went to that because you're from Arizona. I know. So <laughs> I that's am. why I, I had to bring in the locals, <laughs> which is why I make a great team. So I'm part of the reason why Waco's growing. <laughs> and we, we welcome you here, right? New, yeah. new growth is not bad. Um, well, it's, but that's why people love it. I mean, yeah. come on, it's Waco. You got to yeah, love it. Same. Well, can we talk about how much money that the homeowner saves by going through your guys' efforts? Yeah, for sure, because um, with our programs, um, the majority of them don't even pay it back. Um, It's considered a loan, but it's a um, deferred forgivable loan. Um, So if you're 62 and over, you automatically don't repay it. Um, And if you're under 62, you repay a portion um, based on your income level. So the most that you would repay would be 50%. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's interest-free. Yeah, and then we forgive the other portion of it. That's yeah, amazing. And, um, with the down payment assistance, it's always forgivable. Yeah, I was going to say, Susan, everything. can you talk a little bit about how much the down payment assistance is and what that looks like for folks? Yeah, so for down payment assistance, it's for um, what we call first-time home buyers. But what that means is you just can't have owned a home for the last three years. Um, and so we allow up to $25,000 in down payment assistance. Um, and we work a lot with um, other agencies like um, Grassroots, NeighborWorks, um, Waco Habitat for Humanity. Um, a lot of times those folks um, working, um, going through them will also use our down payment assistance. And so they'll get assistance from them or the, those agencies will build their home. And then we'll come in and help them with the down payment assistance um, for it. Um, so it makes the home more affordable. And then the, you know, what we provide, they're not having to pay that back and helps them get into the home easier um, and it helps bring the cost down for them so that they don't have to come up with that money to, um, to put down at closing. Yeah, And that's for first time home buyers? Yes. So as long as you haven't owned a home for three years, okay, you know, you're considered a first time home buyer. Okay. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially the way that housing prices have been recently, Correct. right? Yes. I mean, well, wow. and often that down <laughs> yeah. payment is, is a barrier for folks. Yeah. And so this creates a pathway for home ownership for a lot of folks who I've probably never considered it yeah. um, typically. Well, so, absolutely. Yeah. Can you guys talk about honestly the the importance of of homeownership and that and how big of a step that is in someone's life, or or how it helps yeah. themselves, the community, how it sure. helps Waco? Well, just from I don't I just have somebody come into my mind that um, went through Waco Habitat for Humanity, and it was so emotional for her because she had never um, I don't think anyone in her family generationally had um, owned a home. Mm-hmm. So this was going to be the first time in her family that to be a homeowner, and she, I believe she had like five kids. So for her to be able to provide that for her children and to, to know that she was going to be able to leave them something that they would always have and always have a home to come home to, it was, I just remember being there, um, going to um, where they did the home uh, blessing thing or whatever for them. Yeah, so kind of ribbon cutting. Yeah, ribbon cutting, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and it was just like such an emotional experience. Like she was crying, everybody there was crying because it was oh, just. Wow, yeah. Um, and it's just a good feeling to be able to know that we could be a part of that for people. Yeah, that absolutely. That normally, uh, probably under any other circumstance, wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think that's amazing. 
Yeah, because I was just going to say, like, on the down payment assist, you know, when you think first time home buying, you might think, you know, never owned a home. But the right. fact that yeah. you said in three years, <laughs> yeah. that might make so a huge difference for, for someone, you know, yeah. um, to kind of consider. So, no, I think that's amazing. I'll, I'm definitely looking forward to, like, the partnerships and stuff that we'll uh, continue to grow and develop. Um, over the time, so I'm so glad I uh, made that meeting. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we're we're just happy you enjoyed your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> no, but I do think home ownership is important because it also has an impact on the larger community as well, right? Mm-hmm. So Susan shared about how it can be impactful for one family, but we also know that ho- home ownership creates stability in housing that has an impact on neighborhood schools um, and what attendance looks like there. Um, it impacts uh, kind of the rate of uh, children that are moving from school to school. And so it, ha- it does have an impact on schools, but it also has an impact on neighborhood, right? You see with higher home ownership, you have less crime that's going to occur. You also aesthetically um, typically have homeowners are a little more concerned about what their yards look like, yeah, what their houses look like. It. They take pride in it. And so it has a... a Ripple effect. It has a ripple effect, yeah, <laughs> and an impact on, on communities that are, is even kind of hard to measure um, all of the time, but we know that that happens. So, yeah, Well, awesome. what are you guys looking forward to for the future of Waco and, and housing and community development? I think the exciting thing right now is we do have ARP dollars um, that can be used in a variety of creative ways to really help address some of the housing needs we have right now. And so we're exploring a lot of different um, exciting options, I think, that will be really helpful to the community. Um, And so that right now is exciting to me. Not only that, but we are uh, trying to do a much better job of engaging community members through that process with us so that we're not the only ones coming up with ideas and we're not just... Um, banking on what came out in a report that some consultant did, but we're also talking with community members to figure out what's going to work here, how's it going to work, what does this need to look like, and really trying to uh, make an impact in that sort of way. So that's exciting to me right now. That's awesome. Well, you definitely want the community's involvement, right? Yeah, we really do want their their feedback on on what we ask all the time. You know, we want to hear from you guys. This is the place that you're living in. We're all living in, really, but Mm -hmm. we're just one small part. So... Is that something I was going to ask? What can the community do to help you guys move forward? Yeah, so I think right now, um, one thing that uh, comes to mind is we annually uh, do a survey um, to really figure out how do we need to be using and thinking about our CDBG and home dollars, what are priorities in the community. Um, So I would say be watchful for that. But with the community engagement team right now, we also have a survey that's going out Um, to folks that we really want um, more uh, folks to fill that out. So that's um, really looking at what are our current housing needs, what are ways that we can begin to address that. And so one thing I'll say is um, to be on the lookout for that, look at our, um, uh, that's going to be going out a variety of different ways to to be quite honest. But if you come across that, um, please fill that out, complete that. We want your input and your feedback um, in that process. Um, and if you're interested in the, and you don't see that in the next few weeks, uh, then feel free to give me a, uh, shoot me an email. Um, my uh, email address is Joshua C at Waco TX.gov. Um, and I'll be sure to send that your way. Yeah, I was definitely one of those people that would see that survey come through my email or where even when you're on the phone and it's like, take our one question survey. I'm like, nah, <laughs> no, hang up. All right. <laughs> but then think of it this way. Okay. You're not, you know, you might not be doing it for yourself. Right. But you're doing it for that person that just helped you for the future. So yeah. maybe just take a few minutes. They don't take very long. Right. Yeah, and the yeah. survey is like your chance to have your voice kind of right. in it. And yeah. And, and I will heard. say we've intentionally kept it short so that it won't take you very long. Um, and again, like you mentioned a moment ago, this is all of our city. We're all living here. Um, and so we want to make sure that your voice is included in thinking about what that looks like, especially when it comes to housing moving forward. Yeah. I'm going to be looking for the survey. <laughs> I was going to say, is it kind of, if it, is it set up through maybe email that people have signed up for city emails or? Well, we're actually doing a variety of, of things to get that out. So we're going to be present at several events, but we're also doing some door to door. We're working with a variety of community partners um, to get specific feedback in certain areas of town, but also want it broadly. Um, and so, yeah, so I think, um, we've not fully finalized that plan of what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but, and so the best way right now is to 
kind of uh, be on the lookout for it, you can check our website. Um, and yeah, and then like I said, send me an email if you don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get a million emails. Yeah. <laughs> can I have the survey, please? <laughs> Wouldn't that can be- I have the survey? And can you show up at my event? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be awesome. People though. emailing to ask for surveys. What a time! <laughs> what a, that what would a time! Be. <laughs> I gotta point out though, we were talking about uh, like me being from here and you not being from here, and then you asked Susan a question. You're like, you guys. And I was going to interrupt and be like, see, she's not from here. <laughs> but oh, I had to I point it you out. you guys, not y'all. Yeah. Sometimes I say y'all. Yeah, you it's guys. Cr- it, it's grown on me. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was going to interrupt. And I was like, no, I'll sit back. But I at least had to put my two cents just, in. You just got to wait. Just yeah. got to wait till it died down a little bit. Yeah. Well, anything else that you guys want to talk about and touch on about housing and community development? I don't think so. Hold on. Let me get our, our yeah. posse over here on the yeah, side. Kathleen, Justin. Y'all? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a great point. We do have Spanish speakers on staff, and so uh, don't let that be a barrier as well. We have folks who are ready to help um, and uh, can do that in Spanish as well. Yeah. And that'll be great, especially with our Unidos. Yeah, partner with Unidos, Absolutely. that'll be really great. That would so. be awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you all so much for coming on today and talking and, hope, and hopefully getting the word out, and we will see you all uh, again, and uh, at the many events <laughs> that we yeah. have, and, weeks. and meetings, uh, and powwows, meetings, yeah. powwows, and events, and we're, that we're not going to miss. Okay, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us. Of, of course, course, of course. Yeah, anytime. Let it, let us know, and of course, you know, we're we're always here, always here to get the word out for everyone. So again, thank y'all yeah. so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank y'all for listening to us this week on Waco PD on The Beat. Like we said earlier, housing and community development for the city of Waco. You guys can easily access all this information online on the city of Waco website and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Yeah. You guys don't have any other social media, right? And no. Okay. Yeah. So it's just on the city of Waco website. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Which is, it has an ab- abundance of information it does actually here coming up at least sometime soon Mm -hmm. we're going to do an interactive podcast where we're going to go through and kind of show all the information that's on we're going to basically specifically do the pd but just how much information resources on the city website uh so be looking for that coming up there is quite a lot well thank you guys again for listening us uh, to th- this week. Oh, gosh, I can't say my words. I need lunch now. <laughs> 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 I'm Sierra Shipley, the public information officer for the Waco Police Department. And I'm Officer Janae Draper with the Neighborhood Engagement Team. Have a good one, Waco. Waco PD on the beat. The heartbeat serving 